practically agree with the sentiment of uh, Scorsese, my buddy Marty Scorsese, uh, with what he had to say, but he hadn't seen him. And I know when we've talked before, I tell you, I can't get in, I, ca I can't understand. And then you, why people like them and then you tell me you, well, I haven't seen them but every time I see these movies and I have seen a few of them it is it's and it's not my own sense of like oh I'm determined not to like them I give movies they're I fair think, I think that's shape. part of it, I think it's I, part of it. every time I learn this from Ebert I always take the movie on its own merits I don't let you know my what, own what, what are your thoughts on I'll tell you what I've seen. I'll tell you what, what I... Are, hold on. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the fact that um, directors at the time said the same thing about Scorsese and mob movies or New York movies that he was producing regularly? I don't remember that. And not for the same reasons. I mean, people may like or not like certain movies. I think there's a phenomenon here. I, I do... People do like or not like certain movies. It's... it's Look, these movies, there's something about the, these, and it's not just the Marvel movies. I, why, why set them aside? To me, there's not a huge amount of difference between uh, the Marvel movies or oh, the DC characters. Okay, so it's made by a different- There's a huge, there's a huge difference. The Marvel, the Marvel movies are a worldwide phenomenon. Okay, the Marvel movies have been more successful than the, well, but I mean, I don't know. There have been some successful movies with the Batman. And okay, I see that we will have a problem with these superhero movies. The problem for me is- Yeah, you I, have a problem. I, I don't have a problem with them. I do, well, here, okay, then let me tell you, you do have a problem because then you, we are both forced to explain why do people like them and why do I not like them? Why can't I get anything out of them? I, I don't think you've given them a shot. I have given, okay, let me tell you what I have seen. Okay, I don't know whether you think this counts. I saw the, I saw Spider-Man from 2002. Uh, I, Ra Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Yeah, and I think I saw even Spider-Man 2, if it had. Which I believe out. was, was had, the, had the highest opening of all time. At the time. When it yep. came out. Yeah. And, and might then, have been one of the highest grossing films of all time. Yeah, yeah. And then I think it was uh, superseded by one of the Harry Potters or something. But and, and then I, I saw um, I saw the Christopher Nolan Batman films, and I think sure. it should be held apart. Those are actually different uh, stylistically. Uh, and, big time. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. And I actually think that the only of any of these movies that's uh, really worth anything as a film was uh, the the Dark Knight from two thousand eight. There, there in that movie, also the Christopher Nolan series. Yes, the the only one of these films that found in a so called superhero story something that was worthy of cinema. And then on basically just to satisfy you, you understand to uh, to be able to have this conversation. I, I have feel seen satisfied. over the years. Uh, I saw Iron Man, I saw Wonder Woman, which is not in Marvel, and I saw, I just saw Black Panther. We're not going to talk about Black Panther because Chadwick Boseman just passed away tragically of cancer. That's why, that's I, why we saw I, it. But, uh, I, I feel I, like we should give it, we should give it a, some time. Um, res out of respect. Out of respect. Out of respect. To do with, out with of respect. Him. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to talk about Black Panther tonight. I'm, I'm not, not going to talk about, about but what, to me, there's no difference. These movies, they, might, they were actually made by, uh, the Wonder Woman was made by a different studio. It doesn't matter. They were all the same to me. They're okay. not, though. There's something to me, I, I think stylistically, they're, they're very similar. That, that There must be something. And it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly. Well, I, want, I also, as an outsider, I want you to recognize that um, Marvel, cinematically, has set the pace and is miles ahead of DC. DC's in shambles. So Wonder Woman, that came out probably a decade to 15 years after Iron Man, um, is influenced at, by Iron Man. 2008. Not, so I'm sorry? 2008 was Iron Man. Yeah, so it came out nine or 10 years. And, and due to the success of that, that team that, that put it together and the film itself, we then saw these other 23, we might be up to 24 now, films. Let me, let me. This franchise me, that's grossed $22 billion. Let me $22.5 billion. Way. Let me put it this way. You saw uh, Mad Max Fury Road, right? Loved it. 
Yes. Okay. Has any have any of the Marvel movies like excited you or thrilled you the way that movie did, the way Mad Max Fury Road did? Um Yes. No way. Yes. I can't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> well, that's because you haven't seen you're not invested into the MCU. If you're I'm, you're not if I cared about these characters, if I saw why, oh, I saw the movie with this character, that character, that character, that character and now I can see the Avengers where they're all together. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw, God, I saw the scene. I've, as people have told me, oh, you have to see the Avengers. And what's so special about the Avengers? Oh, well, there's this scene at the end and they're all battling different guys and the camera pans from one guy doing his battle here and mm -hmm. another guy's on a flying ship and he's battling th this this guy here and you know what i saw that scene i'm pretty sure, sure. based on their sure. description and what i saw on tv and i was not impressed in the slightest i thought this is all spectacle and nothing nothing hits me there's nothing there's that, story there daniel there's, there's story in, in each of them all that it, it's it's not exciting it's not there, it, I, I don't feel that there's danger. It's there's some. I think there's a basic problem you with the very idea of you a superhero movie. You didn't think there was danger. But don't you? I guess I don't know. You could probably say, tell me that story about the backstory of the characters of a bunch of these movies, because to me they're really they're, they're hardly different. And uh, I don't know if it's yeah. I could criticize these movies for telegraphing those elements the way you're describing it in such a in such a way that it it, it feels like i'm being hammered with something and it, it somehow ends up having less of an impact than in i don't know some other movie where you know someone had a change of heart or, or i don't know if someone had some reason for doing the thing that they're doing i think i think you're ignoring okay so again we we started this with what do you like in movies um the character, the the story itself, right? The character, um, the the portrayal, the performances by the by the actor, and the the arc of the character itself, and the world building are probably my like probably the three things that I can speak to the that probably do it the most for me when it comes to movies. Mm -hmm. um, so again, if you're if you're going to discredit the world building of a twenty three or twenty four film franchise. And again, the attention to detail, the interconnectivity between these separate films, which had separate directors and separate casts, um, weaving that all in together is impressive on its own. Um, not without diving into the rest of the character development. But there's, there, but there's also real moments in these movies, Daniel, where there's real emotions attached. And I mean, telegraph, chore you know, choreograph for that on screen, and yet it didn't, it didn't hit me. And that you've could, watched, you've watched me, two Marvel movies, and did you finish them? Because you didn't finish those other movies we were talking about earlier. Did you watch it all the way through? Which are the three movies I named? I watched all the way through. Iron Man, you watched all the way through. Did you watch the post-credit scenes? Post-credit scenes, I may not have seen. Oh my goodness. So this is a this is a big factor in the MCU is the post credit scenes because they're telling a story within the story but they're only like minute clips and it's all leading into the next or pushing the the, the entire uh, narrative the forward. The Goblin will return in such and such. That hasn't been said, but I, it's <laughs> an example of something that could be said. Yes, absolutely. I'll, Okay. Did people when you grew up? Did you read comic books? Did you know? No. Okay. And neither no, did but I. I think, I, I but never, I think I we saw anyone reading comic books. I but think. I think we can all. I think we're all fans of heroes and people with extra uh, abilities. Yeah, I, or I don't think so. That that this is actually something that strikes me, and I'm not the first person to say it. That there's something basically wrong with this. That uh, you know, you make a movie about some superhero with superpowers that people don't have. There's going to be a basic division. You know. It, it's like, people, what's the reality in this? If, I, in my view, um, if a movie is going to communicate something thematically, it, can, it doesn't have to be in a realist mode, okay? That's not what I'm saying. It can be something that is not real, but the thing that it has to be telling us has to tell us something true ab about the, the real world. And So relationships, yeah. um, yes. conflict? Something about the actual human condition 
uh, as opposed to a, a fake human condition. So I will get some very little out of one person using, you know, using powers <laughs> to do something a, a normal person couldn't do. So Iron Man doesn't have powers. He's just, powers. he's, he's just uh, a genius and he's a man inside of that suit. Yeah, but he, he has a this suit that can do incredible things. But he built himself. Yeah, can anyone build such a thing? Of course not. I mean, the, have you not been on the internet? People build themselves Iron Man suits every day. I and I want to three D printers. I want to say that uh, would make a caveat to what I just said, which is you know I do believe in the ability you know, that a, a cinema cinema can do things and and properly should do things larger than life. Uh, I don't only believe in the kind of realism of, of that movie Rocky with you know the the little people. Uh, my 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 advisor once said to me, uh, explaining his his view of cinema, you know, no one wants to see a film about the maid. It's a very uh, Is there a movie called The Maids. There's the a help, lot of films or... with that. There's a, the Help and Maid in Manhattan and whatever. Sounds like your advisor. It's a was, very was very a little very narrow old, minded, a very old aristocratic view of view of things. But uh, but I understand what he's saying. I I think it's you know cinema can be something big where the it's particular where the stakes are larger than they usually are and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy with that but but on the but on the other hand it, it has to, it has to balance that with connecting to some kind of real fear or sense of triumph or sense of anything and that the fact is i'm not getting that i think i'm giving these movies their due when i watch them and i'm not getting that from these superhero movies and it may be for lots of reasons. From the from the three superhero movies you've seen, out of out of those of these recent movies, and uh, you can count the other the two Spider Man movies. No one wants to count. You know, I, I watched all those. Uh, I used to I watched the uh, Joel Schumacher Batman movies, and no one no one wants to speak about those anymore. That's not true. I saw the I saw the two thousand six Superman, which was nothing terrible. It's terrible. Again, you're 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 grouping in Marvel and DC, and what is it? What is it? One matter? of which, oh, it, it, it's the same. I can't make an analogy right now, but it's apples to oranges right now, man. Yes, they both deal with superheroes, but the the approach to the storytelling, the performances, the only have one been, different. The only ones where the I think the actual approach to storytelling were different were the Christopher Nolan movies. I think that was probably one of the first that did that. I, th I think the, the original Spider-Man, the same Raimi's, I think that was, that was relatively fresh when it came out at least. I'm um, not saying it was new, but maybe it hadn't been done in quite some time. Um, again, there's these, these films are success successful in many facets, um, mainly financially because people do like them and want to support them and get enjoyment out of them, I hope. I mean, um, well, I know, so, I know, so I don't think it's, I don't, it's, I don't, think, it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's unfair to say that most people get something out of them or, or a lot of people get something out of them. Um, so, I mean, I can, I can do some more research and form that argument um, a little more in depth for you, but I don't, I, 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 I'm having trouble that you're failing to see that there is value in them uh, for some. Yeah, but this is why I said, it's not like I, I'm so pretend, you know, I, what I want to talk about are the films of uh, either either Woody Allen or Lars von Trier or Terrence Malick or, or Hitchcock or Nobody, something. Nobody, that's, I mean, yes, I think you're talking about a, 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 what might have at one point been um, more popular um, style of film or, or style of storytelling or directing or performance than it is now. People, societies change. You know what I mean? I don't think these guys. Were, it, nobody. I. I don't. I haven't seen a single Woody Allen film, and I'm. And I feel pretty okay with that. I, that's not good. You need to see. I mean, you need to see them all, basically. Uh, that's not gonna happen. Oh, I'll watch all the Woody Allens when you go all the way through the MCU. How about that, brother? Goodness gracious! How about that? The MCU movies are longer. Are uh, they? Yeah. How longer with the Woody Allen movies? He has never made a movie two hours long. Okay. Um, I, and they say, and they say that uh, attention spans are low now. <laughs> well, he made half, half about half of his films are comedies. 
and uh, MCU and has comedy. films are, are serious uh, dramas that you know his movies more than anyone else's actually speak to the concerns I have in in life. Okay, uh, that's that's just a totally different kind of movie. Sure. In these, these Marvel movies, and I, I love his movies, and we could talk about his movies about actual things. And but I don't just like those movies, as I've tried to say. I also like action movies. I like thrills. Okay, I'm not. I'm not opposed to. I didn't thrills. say you didn't like thrills. Well, because I, I I loved uh, I loved Die Hard, and I loved uh, Die Hard's The Godfather, the first two Terminator movies, and uh, I would have. I, I think I've told you. And I said this thing about Mad Max, and I said, uh, you know. Loved it. Like I said, Mad Max Fury Road has the Fury Road. Fury, Fury Road, which I actually prefer to the older Mad Max movies. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a movie that has it has your the vision and world building. And by the way, it's a vision that's actually compelling because it's based on a real understanding of like what could actually happen and also human nature. There's a lot of stuff between men and women in that movie. That, that, uh, that rings true to me. And yes, it's under extreme circumstances, but that uh, extreme circumstances we can sort of relate to as, as a real fear, uh, you know, given a climate change. What if civilization collapsed? It would really look like Mad Max. Um, Eventually. And, uh, and, and that's, it, 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 this is just a guy and he's, it, it, it's just one hardship after another, but you can clearly understand what's happening and, and what it is for him and what sort of danger he's in and what are the stakes in each moment and what he has to do. And that movie was, was intense all the way through and it was gripped me the whole way through in a way that I think, you know, are, aren't these Marvel movies, they're really, aren't they supposed to be action films? Are they? No, I don't think they necessarily are. Well, they have action scenes, but you know what? Their action scenes do not, just don't do it for me I don't think they're action movies. Like the action I don't think, scenes in those other movies. I don't movies. think they're action movies. And they're dramatic you're, you're scenes. Misclassifying them. And they're dramatic scenes where they're in a conference table room or a throne room or whatever the hell where they discuss. From the three, the from the three movies that you half watched because you didn't, we weren't into them. Yeah. <laughs> they're just. I, yeah, Look, I, I can, I can everything see doesn't, a particular they thing. They don't all have to. Everything doesn't have to be for everybody, though, Daniel. I mean. But again, I don't. I think you're yeah, discrediting. But, but there are things I think you're discrediting the voice of the people because clearly these films have traction and support and fans, and they're going to be around for a while. There's Could there's going to be MCU movies long after there are Woody Allen movies, my friend. Well, yeah, because Woody Woody Allen is getting up there, and well, also where, also where Marvel 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 is I would uh, strongly argue a much uh, stronger brand than Woody Allen. Of course. I mean, yeah, you could, well, you can look at the numbers and, and say that, but Woody Allen uh, I, I, will win in the long run because Woody Allen has yeah. produced a body of work. Uh, I think, you know, in, in terms of the scope of his, the, the uh, sense of human life, of comedy and tragedy, and actually contributing something to the conversation about- How do you, how do you measure that? Morals. It's 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 uh, the level of Shakespeare, maybe not in style that? but in substance, huh? How do you measure that? That's an opinion. It's an opinion, but we could talk about these movies and so. See- so, but I'm saying, what what's the difference between your opinion on that and the opinion the opinion of the the waves of fans that are uh, are are impacted? And well, because what I would like to, I mean, it's, it's, it's silly to compare, but. I can tell you. That's what exactly what we're doing, though. We're just comparing them. Okay, but I can tell you what is in Match Point, Woody Allen's greatest film. I think uh, I can tell Perfect. you, like, the uh, the ideas and the, the the there's the technique, there's the. Uh, I mean, I yeah, I love that. I was I'm totally engrossed in that when I see that film, and I can probably tell you why. If we mm-hmm. if we went through it, and maybe some of it doesn't need to be even spoken about because it's really technical stuff that goes into filmmaking, but none of that stuff is there in those in these Marvel movies. I see a lot of stuff that I don't like. I don't even like the way they look, honestly. You've also you've also like- seen you've also seen 
how many Woody Allen movies? Uh, all of them. It's almost. What's 50. the number? Can you give me a number? It's fifty or so. He's made a movie basically. Okay. And you've seen. And you've seen two more MCU movies and one DC movie, and then the. Am I going to see something? The, and if I see uh, Avengers one. You can't. Or you can't. You can't. You can't. There. You can't sit there and honestly. Captain tell me that you've Captain. given the MCU the chance that you've given Woody Allen when you've seen 50 Woody Allen movies and two MCU movies and what, then you grouped the, in and then you grouped this? in a DC movie as an MCU movie what is the movie about what am i going to you know how about this you I'm, you're free to spoil a movie for me tell me what i'm going to take away i could tell you what you know what will be the change in you? What what, what you will have it's, to? Uh, wait, it's going to have to wait till the next time, Daniel, because it's seven fifty-seven. If you if you see crimes and misdemeanors or Match Point or Annie Hall or something, but but uh, look, it, movies. look, I'll watch your fifty Woody Allen movies if you watch That's the awesome. entire MCU. Oh my goodness! Well, we'll have to do it uh, alongside to make sure we're keeping our ends of the bargain here. If I didn't say this before, I think that superhero movies have, have such a basic problem with storytelling because when you have someone with these, these fictional powers that they're able to do things that people can't do, there's a remove from reality of, of what it's going to tell us about real life. And, and not only that, but it's also going to affect the story because you're not going to have the same sense of danger. Consequences. Conse yeah, you're not going to have, it's not going to be the same calculus about what they're doing when we know that they have powers. Except, uh, except, for, powers. except for, again, Iron Man has no powers. He has the suit, obviously. Yeah, but the suit but, allows him to but, do all sorts of things. I mean, sure, and how does, the, how does the movie end? What's the final confrontation? It's Tony Stark. Yeah, the with suit's another been torn apart. Yeah, but though you can't say that there there was there weren't risks there. there. And I mean... Again, it's hard. Again, I can report that this battle at the end didn't do anything for me, and uh, you know we can try to understand why. A lot of it is like you know I maybe it's that I don't know. They're only it's it, rather than something I have some experience with. If they're just sort of telling me like how powerful is each iron suit and what really can they do or not it seems like they have a lot of leeway there look at a much if, if i give you an example of a much more compelling thrilling fight you ever see the movie eastern promises uh eastern promises is a david cronenberg movie with Viggo Mortensen, and I forget the whole plot. I know that he is trying to go under, he's trying to get into the Russian mob, very dangerous shadow. To infiltrate you know. or trying to become part of? I forget, I, I know he's undercover. I, I forget when in the story they reveal that, so maybe I'm giving a spoiler alert here. But anyway, uh, at one point, I forget the circumstances, but uh, someone doesn't like him, and he is alone in a Turkish bath, Russian bathhouse, whatever kind of bathhouse. In a schwitz, yeah. Yeah, he's just he just has a towel. And these you've been to those? You you you've been to one of those? I have not. Gone to a schwitz? No, Seems and I fascinating haven't been, to me. I should. I I just I came from the gym, you know, and I I, I haven't been. To, I, actually, they closed the sauna. Well, you know, during, during COVID, but I, I wasn't taking advantage of it before. I should do some of these things, but too lazy. Anyway. Uh, digress, sorry. Yes, uh, he's in there and these two Bathhouse. big menacing guys come in and they have knives. And they come up and they're gonna, they're gonna stab him to death and he has to fight them both. And all he has is, is he's gonna be naked. He, he, there are times when he has to, you know, possibly allow himself to be stabbed somewhere so he won't be stabbed elsewhere and so he can get the other guy unbelievable this this is a fight this this was intense this was something it's like you watch and you're just like floored this is what cinema is for captain america winter soldier this, is praised as the best marvel movie action wise so uh, if we're just grading up on action but i do want to i do want to bring up that you know you talk about these these superheroes um having powers and they're not being real odds or like stakes or consequences because they're superhuman 
you know they're going to survive sort of thing. You can say that about of most action movies with the, the title character on the movie poster. We Not didn't think okay, John McClane have... was going to die at any point in Die Hard, right? Well, uh, okay. I mean, you can think about it that way. I think success... I, I, I think the fact that it's a superhero that. movie and you're not allowing that, that suspension of disbelief because it's a superhero movie. No, but you can, any action movie, you know the hero's not gonna die most of the time. That's a cerebral thing. I have a counter to that though. I think the superhero movies go further because they, they do another thing, another part of the, uh, the, the film meaning. And again, you've only popular. seen two MCU movies. Out of 23. 24. Oh, but they do it in all the superhero movies. Let me, let me tell you, here's, here's the kind of scene that they show you. Let me tell you. They will always give you a scene early on to establish just how powerful the powerful guy is. Look what they can do. Okay. The hero or the villain? The, the hero. Usually, well, they'll also have to do that with the, they also do that with the villains too. They need to tell you these things. Right. I mean, you can see why you can understand why, because you, they need to do all this other stuff in order to communicate the difficulty or the stakes because it's not being done because it's so detached from actual reality. So anyway, they will show you how you know, Black Panther can just take down a whole convoy. You don't want, you're shaking your head, but We're they did it. not talking about Black Panther. You gotta give us some more time. Well, this is, gotta give, hey, it's had its, it's, had its time. Chadwick Boseman. We're going to Chadwick it, Boseman this time. I don't know. I'm just past. Yeah, I know, but what does that have to do with talking about the movie? Whatever. Anyway, the um, what was I saying? They always show you in Iron Man. I go, he goes and he saves the whole village, and he's so powerful. No, no one can stop him. Uh, they, you know, it just change. It, no mere mortal. It, yeah, but they're stop him. they're actually working against the effectiveness of their own story by doing this kind of sensationalism, this kind of thing which is meant to impress you, is actually defeating you because, because it's lessening the impact of what comes later. The conflict between the hero and the villain? Yeah, well, it, 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 because because it takes away once we get the sense that this person can do you know all sorts of things especially if it's effortless right i i think that the filmmaker thinks he's doing us a great big favor because look at how impressive as though as though that's supposed to have some emotional impact on me to see someone doing something incredible I mean, I only want to see that. I want to see incredible things, but I want to see things that are somehow earned, right? I want to know that it, it came, it, it had to come with some difficulty. Otherwise, what am I supposed to take from that? So, I mean, that's why I'm, I'm somewhat more inclined to like, I don't know, some of the stuff in, in John Wick. I mean, they really have him almost evenly matched. Some of it is- Do you think John Wick's, do you think John Wick's going to die in any of the John Wick's? But that's it. That's an intellectual, that, that's a, I, I'm, I'm not thinking that at the time because the setting in which he's in communicates so clearly to me the danger and difficulty that he will have to overcome. And I'm excited to see that he's, he's really going to have to be good if he's facing three guys with throwing knives and he doesn't have any knives, you know. Uh, like he's going to have to do something awesome to beat him and, and it, it, it delivers. I'm trying to name the kind of movies that are other movies that do the same kinds of things and did them better than these superhero movies, which are only imitate. I mean, the, the Incredible Hulk is a lot like a combination of the Bourne movies and maybe King Kong. Uh, I guess, and the Avengers, I, I have to say, it, there's more hype. They just build and build like this is the biggest thing. But actually, a lot of a lot of the thrill of that movie is like your anticipation of the confrontation of all these different characters. Sure, so the just, internal the internal conflict? Is that internal? I, I don't know, they're meeting each other and they see what they have to say. But uh, I don't know, it's still so childish and it's still, again, I don't know. You Daniel, know, it's based off a comic book series. Of course it's gonna be childish. What are you talking about? 
Well, well okay. What but are your expectations? Okay, so let me, it, to, to that point, let me say uh, this, okay? How childish can you make it? Why did people hate those Joel Schumacher movies, which to my mind are actually a, a more faithful representation of the style of comic books? I think I'm you're, I think, I think it's revisionist history. I think those movies didn't do as well as the Burton Batmans. And and maybe I, I don't I think if you go back and look at the box office success of them I think they were successful. But uh, but I'm not talking about the box office success. I, I think yes I think they did they did they certainly did make people's a lot of opinions money. change too right like at the time those were the second best Batman movies because they were the only other Batman movies since we've had the Dark Knight trilogy right we've had Ben Affleck reprise the role they had the Gotham series. Robin Pattinson's taking on the cape now. Like, your opinion's going to evolve as there's more options. What do you think of these movies? Which ones? The Schumachers? Yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen them. I remember that they were fine, but the, not that I was thrilled or blown away with them. But they I weren't. They them. weren't. They weren't something that I'd uh, look forward to rewatching. They are different. They More are jump to. I mean, let's let me let me try to compare briefly um, the uh, the Joel Schumacher movies, the Christopher Nolan movies, and the Marvel movies. I don't know what the point of comparing those are, though. Well, they're d different attitudes towards how how one should go about making a superhero movie. I'm trying to see, you know, what did was was to? was Christopher Nolan making a superhero movie? Well, if you watch the interviews, uh, I, I watched a making of thing uh, about uh, about his movies, and uh, everyone involved in the production of that movie is saying like, we wanted to make a superhero movie which was nothing like a superhero movie. Like we're artists, we want nothing to do with that. Sure. Christopher Nolan's his whole job. He thought of, like, what is it in this story that is really important that I really want to tell. Uh, I want to, you know, make a world that is exaggerated but but more real, so that you know something about this story has to connect with people. I happen to think that is a very good way of you know trying to adapt anything. So you can you can you can associate and connect and relate to Bruce Wayne, the well, billionaire. There has to be something you find in the story that that you think vigilante. is worth worth telling, worth showing, worth giving your view on. Uh, anyway, that's his attitude towards it. And when you see the attitude of someone like Kevin Feige, is that how you say his name? I believe, yep, Feige is how he, I've heard it pronounced. He has a very different attitude towards uh, the Marvel franchise uh, and about you know how it needs to um, be faithful to something and deliver. So I, I think that's so smart, uh, blending them together. He has a built-in audience of millions, right? That are that are faithful and just want to see the portrayal and development of these court, these uh, stories and these characters that they've come to love, right? And then, but then they can also. It's not a direct adaptation, right? So they can then pique the interest and try and draw in fresh, fresh eyes. Uh, well, I guess, it, yeah, there are lots of ways you can bring in new people. I guess I just want to say that the Joel Schumacher movies, I think are so reviled for their um, exaggeration, their, their childishness, their, their absurdities. Like this is not how the world really looks. It's not how it works. Criminals don't just announce themselves and make a pun that has to do with their particular power. Uh, I'm just saying, all these ridiculous people were so angry about like uh, nipples on the bat suit or whatever. And how impractical. It's clearly spectacle, right? It's it's it knows what it is. It is trying to be over the top and funny. It it actually I think is, it's a kind of defensible representation of the style and you know of capturing the feel of comics and yet people were offended by it offended by it in some way and i think what's funny about this here's just my my theory is that 
people want something that's a little bit contradictory. They go to see the movie because of something they loved as children and they need to see something deliver on this thing that they remember loving, but it can't be the thing, you know, the, the actual thing that they had as, as children because that is so, it's actually childish. They, they somehow want to see it, but uh, given more credibility somehow than it actually ever had because now they're adults and uh, it, it needs to not be the... It's gonna be familiar, familiar enough, but not over the top childish. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, it somehow needs to <laughs> be the thing that they want it to be and validate that thing at the, at the same time, which it can't, it can't be if it's actually the thing that it really was before. It needs to, it needs to change and that creates some kind of uh, tension there. Um, I guess, I don't know if there's something else that you want to say to defend. I haven't heard a lot from you saying what you like about the content of these movies. And I don't know if there's anything there. I think you're right to say that there's, uh, you get caught up in the, the hype and the events of seeing these movies. I think, and the, I, I think the, I think the individual performances by the, 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 actors are, 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 you know, there's a credit to those as well. Um, That's, is, that, is that what's sustained? Well, I, again, like, are we defending, am I defending the, the, the franchise as a whole or am I defending Captain America? Because like- Well, I, I guess I'm, the, the, my criticism- Because we didn't even get through all. Captain America. We didn't even get through Captain America. It kept getting derailed. True, but my criticisms apply to all of these films and I just, you know, Look, man, if you don't like popcorn, I can't sell you popcorn. Like, that's mm -hmm. just like the end of the day, you know? I mean, you're going to keep watching them, though. Well, only if we, we made an agreement. I here. watched Danny Hall. I finished Danny Hall today, and I liked it. Oh, see, that's, that's what I want to talk about, because, of course... I knew that's what you wanted to talk about. This is the other half of this. You know, I guess I can't convince you if you... Say you like these movies. I haven't heard a reason why you like them exactly that I believe in or that I that we keep cutting people. the subject short and we're gonna jump. Huh? Else. We didn't. We go ahead. It's fine. For example, here I'll just give one more criticism of the. the uh, if you take the mythical world in Thor, uh, Asgard. Asgard, and the other oh, Asgard, you know realm its name. that they go to, I show forget. it some respect. The the land, but there's the other land of the guys who are all blue and look like the ice giants. Huh? The ice giants? Is that what they're called? I thought they have some other name for them. Hmm. Doesn't matter. Anyway, it is so, it, this is, this to me is a cl clear example of terrible world building because- You're gonna hate Thor too. It's, it has nothing to it. It is the, it is the most limited, least imaginative, based on no knowledge of anything idea. It's like, oh, a, a perfect world has big gold towers and flying things and they are vaguely medieval. It doesn't explain. There's, Does that sound like anybody you know? What? Uh, what uh, big, big gold towers? I don't know. No one has a gold tower, but. Uh, okay. <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> you're talking about our president? Is that. I, uh, no, no, no. This is a movie. This is a movie podcast, Daniel. Anyway. Uh, I'm just saying there was no there was no detail there was no detail there that suggested any kind of uh, knowledge or serious dealing with what would I don't know a kind of heavenly or godlike realm really be like that can impart any new knowledge to us that that anything to take away from it, it's you know it's it's almost how how bizarre how minimal how stupid the the set design is in any of these movies, and the same I thought of Black Panther and all these visions of the future or very wealthy people, like they just have giant empty halls, you know, with fancy carpets. They These people have never seen a movie, say by Pedro Almodovar, where people have very interesting houses decorated full of color and, it, it, you know, uh, it's just a very different There wasn't enough color in Black Panther for you? Just saying it's, it's a different approach to set design or an aesthetic of like, well, or, 
that just speaks to what would a thing really look like? How would it really function? You know, actually, my, uh, one of my favorite filmmakers, Hayao Miyazaki, thinks a lot about this because as an animator, he has to, everything in the film has to come from his mind, right? It's not, it's not there to be filmed on camera. And he explains how, you know, this, Miyazaki loves airplanes, okay? That this has been his obsession since boyhood. And a lot of his movies have all kinds of flying apparatus and he draws them and he, he know, you know, he's really drawing the motor and all this stuff. And he explains, if you don't know the thing that you're drawing, and people say this also about writing, you know, write what you know, why? Because when you know something, you can provide the detail of it that can tell someone else something about that thing. If you're an animator and you are asked to draw a plane, and you don't know anything about planes and you don't bother to learn anything about planes, then the only kind of plane that you can draw is the kind of plane that you have in your imagination. It's all, only what a person who knows nothing about planes will know. You know there have to be wings and a nose and a tail, but you don't know anything about how, how it moves, how, how it works, and you can give people no more than the stupidity you know, that come from their own first impression, their own imagination. And the work of a movie has to be telling us something extra. It can't just be the first stupid thing that came into your head and just putting it there. You, you, have, to, to, you have to bring us something. And I feel like that's bad world building that happens in, in Thor. Uh, well, I think, I think, I think to, to more of that credit, I think that's the exact argument that people who are fans of Marvel movies have against the DC movies, the modern equivalent DC movies. Well, I guess I haven't seen any of those except for Wonder Woman, but you know, to me, there was really no that? difference between Wonder Woman and, uh, you know, the, the Marvel movies. Did you like Captain America more or Wonder Woman more? I don't know. I think Wonder Woman at least uh, titillated me with the, the, the its premise or, you know, that there I could hate be... that you said titillated. <laughs> I there, hate there it. There was at least the possibility that there would be a kind of, uh, you know, battle of the sexes, you know, uh, gender roles, a kind of battle going on in, in that movie that, that might be of interest and it never delivered as far as I was concerned on that premise. On the, uh, I don't know, it's hard for me to say, you know, all these movies, they don't do a whole lot for me. That's just the, the fact of it. 